It's a mystical tradition centuries old. It's just a really cool thing to travel with these dogs. The storied last great race, the Iditarod, traverses over 1,000 miles of Alaskan wilderness. The experiences that you have out there were just phenomenal. Man and man's best friend braving sub-zero temperatures, an extreme test of teamwork and endurance. They're athletes. These dogs are very enthusiastic. But beyond the wreaths and prize money, behind the ice blue eyes and shiny coats, some allege lies a bitter story. This fall, another sports doping scandal, but this time with dogs, when I did a rod officials said four tested positive for a banned painkiller. This is the first year in 25 years that we've had a positive test. Musher Dallas Seavey, a four-time Iditarod champ, denies drugging the dogs on his team and says that any tampering may have happened after the race while his dogs were unattended. I have done nothing wrong. I have never knowingly broken any race rule. I have never given any banned substance to my dogs. But a controversial new documentary called Sled Dogs. They have no idea what is going on. Claims that neglect, cruelty, and abuse in the world of dog sledding is common practice. It's kind of like somebody running a marathon. And tomorrow, we're going to go run another marathon. And now somebody asks you to run 10 in a row. That's what these guys are doing. If we knew that what was really going on behind the sled dog industry, that these dogs are in fact used and abused for mushers to make a profit, the public would not support this. Director Fern Levitt says she decided to focus on the industry after adopting her own retired sled dog. When you hear about these sled dogs, you hear, well, they love doing this. Mm -hmm. They love running with their buddies. Mm -hmm. They love going out there and hitting the trail. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is what they're bred for. This is what they're mm -hmm. built for. Yeah, that's the narrative that I've heard, and that was the narrative I believe was true as well. But then what I found out is this is a business. And these mushers who run these places are here to make money. Sled Dogs follows rookie musher Patrick Beal during the 2016 Iditarod. My name is Patrick. My quest is to seek the Holy Grail. As the race grinds on... You guys just don't want the water, do you? Levitt claims that the dogs on his team are too exhausted to even eat or drink. I have a dog that has a high heart rate. It's a warm day, and every now and then dogs get diarrhea. The film shows a veterinarian cautioning Beale. His heart rate, you know, about 120, which is right at the very max. Honestly, I'm a little worried about him. But he decides to continue the race anyway. Patrick put his own needs to win that race ahead of what's best for that dog. That was a sick dog that needed to be dropped that wasn't dropped because his motivation was winning the race. But Beale says the filmmakers weren't even there for what happened next. When I left, the dog's heart rate was fine. It had hit, hit an equilibrium point, and that dog finished I did a rod with me. It's not like someone goes and gets into running sled dogs because they want to abandon dogs and mistreat dogs, and especially I did a rod mushers. Many in the dog sledding community say that the film is flawed. Her representation of mushing was distorted. Dr. Stuart Nelson has been the chief veterinarian for the Iditarod for over two decades. These dogs have a very specific purpose, a very specific uh, talent. These dogs are bred very specifically as marathon athletes. That's what they do, that's what their passion is for. Iditarod says you're an animal rights activist with an agenda. What do you say to that? I do love animals. There's no question about that, I do. Um, but I did this because this was a story kept hidden. And I knew that I had to, as a documentary filmmaker, bring this to light. In response to last year's doping scandal, the Iditarod has strengthened its rules. Musher Dallas Seavey released a statement saying that he wants to see the drug test results and methodology, adding, I believe this is the first positive step that can be taken to shed a public light on what has been alleged to clear my good name and to clear the name of our beloved sport. In Sled Dogs, Levitt also takes aim at the common practice of tethering, something she says amounts to a dog spending its entire life on a leash. This goes against the natural instincts and the natural behavior of, of dogs. I mean, when you think about it, what species, what any kind of species, is going to survive and thrive living its life on the end of the chain? One of the sled dog kennels shown in the film is called Krablunik, located in Snowmass, Colorado. Some of the dogs here have run the Iditarod. This is a storage facility. These dogs are just here to be stored until they can make money. 
The documentary looks at local activist attempts to shut it down starting in 2008, claiming the dogs here were horribly mistreated. I saw dogs circling on their chains for hours. I mean, they just circle and circle and circle. I saw no people providing any care for the dogs. There were muddy grounds. They would eat and defecate in exactly the same spot. And legally, the dogs were supposed to be on six-foot chains. I will remind everybody that I'm not doing anything illegal. Dan McEachin was Kriblunik's owner at the time. There's no violations at, uh, in terms of legality. But in 2013, Colorado authorities made a surprise inspection. That's when they found eight dogs that were malnourished, some needed vet care, and Dan McEachin was charged for animal cruelty on eight counts. McEachin, who died in 2016, pleaded guilty to one count of animal cruelty, the other seven charges dismissed. I live for the day for the, when the chains are broken and all those dogs go into loving homes where they belong. Do you want this industry shut down completely? Yes, I want this, this industry to be shut down completely, just like I want the circuses to be shut down completely, because it's cruel. Today, Kriblunik is owned by Danny and Gina Phillips. In the winter, tourists spend hundreds of dollars here for sled dog rides. How many dogs do you have here altogether? 213. They invited us in, insisting the Kriblunik of today is not the one portrayed in the film. There have been terrible things that have happened. Dan McEachin is terrible but it doesn't define the whole mushing community as a whole. As we walk around here, if I were here 10, 15 years ago, what's different today? The love, you know, really that's, we love these dogs. You know, these are, every minute, every waking minute with these dogs is just love. It's, uh, they needed us, we needed them. In the off season, the dogs are allowed to run free for an hour a day. Gina and Danny admit they're tethered for the other 23, but insist they're happy. What do you tell people who see these dogs going back on the tethers for 23 hours a day and say it's cruel? It's not cruel. You know, that the, there's so much more going on than just running. There's always something going on and they're cleaning or they're petting them or they're brushing them or they're feeding them. It's a, just a different thought than, than what you're used to seeing when you see the you know, the dog in the backyard here, it's a different environment. They're always getting contact. Come on, guys. After an hour of running, it's snack time. Why are they howling? After every amount of uh, care that we do with the dogs, they thank us for the care that we gave them. And basically... This is a thank you howl? This is a thank you. This is a happy howl. Let's go, guys. Come on, guys. Let's go. Seth Saxon runs the Aspen Animal Shelter. He briefly worked at Kriblunik years ago while under the previous owner. Eloise, I used the word <laughs> controlled chaos earlier. He rescued like, six of the sled dogs as pets, five. including Suri. I call my place Lost Dog Ranch. She was my most scared dog and under socialized to where, um, I mean, she just graduated today. Like, this is insane. And she's, she's loving affection from you. And how long did that take? Um, it's taken forever. It's been a process. He says the upside is that with lots of rehabilitation, there can be life after a career in sledding. Yeah. For Nightline, I'm Clayton Sandell in Snowmass, Colorado. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.